Hello, and welcome to Soothing Pod's Sleep Stories. My name is Arif, and tonight I will be your guide as we embark on a journey to the city of Pearl Crest, a city far, far beneath the waves where humans, mermaids, and other magical creatures live in harmony with one another. It is a fantastical town, one brimming with surprises, beauty, and secrets. Beneath the waves of a far-off island, it is the perfect place to escape for relaxation, peace, and connection. We will journey to Pearl Crest with a young girl named Aurora, who is visiting her family there for the very first time. Through her eyes, we will discover this wondrous place in real time and discover what it has to offer. Before we begin, however, let us take a moment to unwind and find peace and comfort in that place that we are in here and now. Close your eyes and allow your body to sink into whatever surface you are lying on. Feel the comfort and support of it beneath you as you truly turn your attention to it. Feel the points where your body is in contact with the surface you are laying on. Feel how it cradles you and comforts you. Here and now, there is no to-do list. There are no responsibilities. By simply listening to the sound of my voice, you are already giving yourself the rest and relaxation that your body deserves. Anything else you are seeking will come in time. But for now, find comfort in the fact that you are already giving your body and your mind a great gift. With your eyes closed and your body sinking deeper, and deeper into the surface that you are lying on. Try to imagine something with me. You are no longer in the space you began in. Instead, you are on a beautiful tropical beach. Your eyes are closed, but your other senses know exactly where you are. You can hear the waves lapping the shore just inches from where your feet are resting. The steady, rhythmic whoosh as they rise up, up, up on the sand, and then slink back, back into the ocean where home awaits. The white noise of the ocean is somehow both powerful and soothing, lulling you closer and closer to a state of pure bliss. Overhead, you feel the heat of the lazy afternoon sun shining down on you and the sand around you. You run your hands through the sand at your sides. The warmth of each grain coursing through your fingers and trickling down onto the beach is like a balm to your soul. With each grain that falls, the smooth sound of the sand rubbing against each other lulls you closer and closer toward a state of serenity. As you breathe in, you feel the invigorating ocean air fill your lungs and calm your body. In it, you can taste the salt of the ocean, the expansiveness of the horizon, 
and the palm fronds overhead. As you exhale, you seem to sink deeper and deeper into the sand, your body growing even warmer and more relaxed. Then you start to notice something rather remarkable. As you breathe in, taking in the invigorating air, the palm fronds above you blow aside, allowing the sun to shine down on your face. As you breathe out, the palm fronds blow in the wind and block the sun, providing you with a much needed respite from the warmth. For quite some time, you savor this dance as it happens above you, breathing in and feeling the warmth of the powerful ocean sun, and exhaling, feeling the comfort as the shade of the palm tree. You breathe in, feeling the warmth of the ocean sun, and exhale feeling the comfort of the palm tree's shade. You breathe in, feeling the warmth of the ocean sun, and exhale, feeling the comfort of the palm tree's shade. This rhythmic dance soothes you allowing your body to relax even more into the sand beneath you. You stay here for quite some time, feeling the sand, the sun, and the shade. Remember that at any point during tonight's journey, you are welcome to travel back here, to sit on the beach and watch as the beauty of the day passes by without worry. Now that we have taken the time to relax and find peace and comfort in the place we're in here and now, let us begin our story. When Aurora awakened on that warm August day, she felt shimmers of joy radiating through her body. It seemed that even before her eyes opened, even before her body was really awake, she was prepared to go to Pearl Crest. Growing up, she had heard tales from her grandmother about her cousins that lived in the city far in the distance, beneath the cerulean waves that surrounded Aurora's awe-inspiring coastal town. It was a town that lived and thrived in beautiful harmony with the ocean. When the ocean flourished, so did the town. When fair winds blew upon the waves, Fair winds blew upon the cobblestone streets and red brick buildings that contrasted the coastline. Aurora knew her cousins lived underwater, though she had never been there herself. Often, kids in her class would tumble in after a long weekend away with stars in their eyes. They would talk on and on about visiting Pearl Crest, about the wondrous things they had seen. Aurora's best friend, Melody, had even returned with not just awe sparkling in her eyes, but a pearl and seashell necklace laced around her neck. It was the token souvenir of everyone who visited the magical town beneath the sea, where mermaids and talking fish awaited anyone 
who was lucky enough to visit there. Aurora spent that whole day daydreaming about what Pearl Crest looked like. Were the buildings made of our seashells? Were they sunken pirate ships? What did the streetlights look like? What were the restaurants like? And, most importantly, how were the parks? Years passed, and Aurora had yet to visit her family in Pearl Crest. That is, until that fateful day in August, soon after she turned 18. The night before, her grandmother had handed her a worn piece of paper. It crinkled in her hands, snapping and popping in her grasp like dried seaweed. And as she looked closer, she realized that's exactly what it was. The seaweed was in the shape of a seashell. The rounded edges reminded her of the rounded coastline, lined with golden sandy beaches just outside her front door. But the shape itself, a beautiful, undeniable seashell, made her think of the necklaces waiting down in Pearl Crest for her. It was only then that she realized the ticket was a two-way fare down to Pearl Crest. She would travel by ferry the next morning, soon after the sun rose, when the seas were fair and still painted with the pink light of the morning rays. That fateful, blissful morning Aurora tiptoed out of bed with a smile on her lips. She knew the feeling of her cool hardwood floor would soon be replaced by the silky smooth touch of sand between her toes. The cool breeze was going to be the softest wisp of a nearby current, twirling her hair behind her and making her clothes sway like the sails of a sailboat. The sunlight would be filtered, trickling through the baby blue water over her head, like gold melting into the sea. She slipped on a cozy outfit and carefully packed a yellow briefcase full of all the things she needed over the course of the day. Slowly, she began making her way down the peaceful cobblestone streets to the ferry that awaited her. For a long moment, she looked around and appreciated the town with what felt like new eyes. She had never been anywhere else which only made her home feel more special that morning. She admired the way the pink sun shone on the red bricks, casting a ruby sheen on them that felt as magical as the view of the ocean was. She admired the quaint flags hanging from houses, some celebrating summer, some showcasing seashells and lighthouses, and others proclaiming the family name. Certainly a family name that had been in this town for generations. By the time she reached the ferry, she felt a lightness in her already. The boat, named the Dream Maker, sat as still as can be on the water below. The harbor water was like glass, extending on towards that pink and purple horizon 
like it was a mirror of the heavens. This time in the morning, the sea was always at its most serene, which only made Aurora feel even more comfortable with the trip ahead of her. A gangway led up onto the ferry. With every step, it creaked and rattled, telling its ancient tale to anyone who would listen. Aurora could see bits of kelp and barnacles clinging to the bottom of the gangway, left over from high tide. She found a glimmer of happiness in the fact that soon, the bottom of the gangway would rest into the water once more, returning the kelp and barnacles to the safety of the water. When she crossed onto the deck, a woman extended her hand. Her hair was copper, glistening in the slowly rising sun so brightly that it seemed to outshine it. Her eyes were deep, deep blue. For a moment, all Aurora could do was stare into them. They were like pools of water, mesmerizing, trance-inducing. The woman offered Aurora a soft smile. Ticket, please, she chimed. Her voice was melodic and sing-songy. An ethereal chorus among the sound of the ocean waves below and the seagulls overhead. It was only then that Aurora noticed the woman was sitting on a barrel, and below her there was a large trough of water. An iridescent tail rested in the container, shimmying side to side with involuntary rhythmic movement. The woman's scale seemed to shift color with every movement. Sea foam, then a fur green, then a baby blue, and back to a breathtaking emerald sheen. The woman seemed unbothered by Aurora staring. She chuckled at her, and in that same sing-songy voice, asked if it was Aurora's first time seeing a mermaid. Aurora told her that it indeed was, and that this would be her first time visiting Pearl Crest. She handed the mermaid her ticket. The mermaid stamped it and gave her an encouraging, welcoming touch on the shoulder. You're going to love Pearl Crest, she chimed you'll feel right at home. With that, Aurora journeyed to a spot on the very front of the boat. There were very few people milling about. On this early of a journey, many were still probably curled up in bed, and yet there was nowhere else that Aurora would rather be. Slowly, the boat pushed off from shore. The cool breeze washed over Aurora, causing every muscle in her body to totally and completely relax. As the sun crept up higher and higher over the horizon, she closed her eyes and savored the feeling of standing on the bow of the ship. The mist of the ocean waves blew over her, sprinkling her with droplets of cool relief against the warm light of the sun. In that mist, she felt a freedom that was hard to find on land. She was untethered to the life she was leaving behind 
on the shore. She felt as if she could do anything, go anywhere. The connection she felt to herself and to the world around her made a feeling of belonging flicker through her body. She took a deep breath of the sea air. She felt the invigorating, brisk air fill her lungs and relax her body in a single breath. Her hands loosened on the railing, and her hair swayed behind her with the motion of the wind wrapping around her. She smiled, not for anyone else, but a simple smile for herself. Then she felt a tap on her shoulder. She turned, the smile still lacing her face, and was surprised to see the mermaid standing behind her. The trough of water was on wheels, allowing her to glide across the deck with ease. She smiled at Aurora and handed her what looked like a tiny gummy starfish. It was pink, as pink as the real starfish, far, far below the deck. That will allow you to enjoy the city like we do, the mermaid assured her before wheeling off to the next human nearby. Aurora turned over the strange little gummy in her hands. She popped it in her mouth, and she knew the moment that she did that something wonderful had happened. She felt as though her breathing was much, much deeper, as though she was breathing in a way she never had before. And slowly, the fairy began to glide under the waves. This was not a mistake, not a crash, but an elegant, smooth, intentional drift beneath the waves. On the front of the boat, Aurora grinned from ear to ear, her hands tightly wrapped around the railing as the entire boat slowly traveled down into the ocean. She felt sunlight on her face, and then she heard the peaceful serenity of the ocean. The quiet, muffled comfort of it engulfing her. When she opened her eyes, she couldn't see clearly underwater. She could breathe. It felt just like breathing on land, perhaps even more invigorating and relaxing. The ferry chugged along under the waves like a submarine, but with its decks open, allowing its passengers to get a good look at the world around them. And, my, was there a lot to see. Kelp danced and swayed in the sand, providing a safe home for dozens of fish and crabs and lobsters. A horseshoe crab scuttled between some anemones, going at his own pace, seemingly in his own world. Schools of fish flew around the ship, on a mission to get somewhere in the far distance. Dozens of them swam, and yet they moved in unison, in brilliant, breathtaking motion with one another. In the rays of light filtering down through the waves, the fish were a mosaic of silver, slate, and gray. They glistened much like the tops of the waves did above shore. 
The freedom that they moved with captivated Aurora. This whole ocean was their playground, and judging by how smoothly they slid through the water, they had seen quite a lot of it. Beneath the water was more serene and calm than Aurora had ever imagined. The peaceful silence of the world beneath the waves made Aurora almost feel as if she was being swaddled, wrapped safely and warmly in the arms of someone who loved her. Even though the sight before her was stunning, she closed her eyes for a second to just take in the absence of loud noise. When she opened her eyes again, the fairy was swooping down around a corner. Rocks rose from the water to the right of them, undoubtedly leading to a beach or island of some kind. But as they rounded the corner, something entirely new came into view. At first, all Aurora could make out were the colors. It was more color than she had ever seen, all gathered in one breathtaking place. Pearl Crest was more incredible than she ever imagined it would be. The towering businesses and homes themselves were made from seashells and coral. Each building was a different color, yet they all worked in harmony with each other somehow. There were buildings of a soft baby pink, buildings of a starburst yellow, buildings of tangerine and poppy and cinnamon. The city wasn't just a city, it seemed alive. Though the buildings were different colors, each roof was the same, and Aurora was thankful for that. The roofs were the mother of pearl. They shimmered and changed color as you moved around them, shifting from a crystal clear white to a stunning blue and purple sheen. She saw how the city had gotten its name and it only made her want to get closer. Before they even arrived at the station, Aurora became aware that there were no cars in this city. The streets were made for floating, as it were, and a current ran along each street, guiding people in the direction they needed to go. When people needed to turn, they simply held up a large seashell that they carried with them, which would whisk them into the correct current. Watching the people float along without a care in the world was mesmerizing. There was no traffic, no impatience, no honking. The people were truly just going with the flow, and it was taking them exactly where they needed to be. At the edge of one of the streets, a large expanse of wavering seaweed rested. In the ocean current, it swayed side to side, much like grass in the wind. People and mermaids alike roamed across the kelp bed, smiling and laughing with one another. It was their vision of a park, and it was more incredible than Aurora had ever imagined. Coral reefs zigzagged through the park, providing swaths of color in the bed of green. Children toddled and swam alongside it, admiring it and climbing over it to reach one another. 
everyone here seemed so happy, so connected to the moment. Slowly, the ferry lowered into the station. It was a simple building, one made of dandelion yellow shells stacked on top of each other to resemble a tower of sorts. Maps and brochures written on seaweed were tethered to the edge, available for anyone to grab a copy before heading out to explore the vast and wondrous city. But Aurora wouldn't need a map, not today, because waiting at the station, somewhere in the small crowd of people, her cousins awaited her. They were a few years older than her and had been passionately awaiting her arrival for quite some time now. Even though she hadn't seen them in years, Aurora knew her cousins the second she locked eyes with them. Serenity and Samuel floated next to the station. When they saw Aurora, their eyes lit up. They hurried over to her, wrapping their arms around her and embracing her as if she was arriving home. They were humans like her, and yet this had been home as they knew it their entire lives. Their father, Aurora's uncle, felt more at home beneath the waves than he ever had on the surface. Serenity and Samuel expressed how overjoyed they were to finally have Aurora here with them. There were so many things to see, so many things to do here. They took her by the hand, leading her toward the current that led to the main street in the underwater city of Pearl Crest. When Aurora stepped into the current for the first time, she was amazed by how weightless she felt sailing through the streets without even having to move. The current whisked her around corners, up hills, through caverns where fish sailed just above her head. Each sight was somehow more beautiful than the last. She was utterly entranced by every corner she rounded and every cavern that she emerged from. It was truly like being in another world. Soon, Serenity wrapped her hand around Aurora's and gave her a smile. With a simple flick of her seashell, they found themselves on a sidewalk. This was the downtown area of Pearl Crest. Buildings were close together and more colorful than ever. Shoppers, mermaid and human alike, meandered along the streets, peering in store windows at the wares. The clothing hanging on mannequins was unlike anything Aurora had ever seen. The clothes were all iridescent, like the scales of a fish, shimmering and changing color as you passed them. Some were flowy, trailing through the cool water like a plume of dreamy smoke. Others fit on like armor, a shield of light no matter where you went. Serenity, Aurora, and Samuel dipped into the store. The feel of the fabric was almost like silk. Aurora piled some onto the counter, placing a rock on top of them so that they didn't 
float away. And just as they were about to check out, her eyes caught sight of something. A seashell and pearl necklace. The souvenir of this city. The thing she had longed her entire childhood for. She wrapped her fingers around the necklace. With Serenity's help, she clasped the necklace around her neck and gazed in the mirror in the store, its edges tarnished like sea glass. She smiled at her reflection in the mirror. Her hair floated around her like a halo, only adding to the magic of the moment for her. With a smile, she purchased everything on the counter. Serenity and Samuel showed her around the town, taking in every beautiful sight there was to see. They meandered through the same park Aurora gazed upon earlier, seeing children and mermaids alike swimming with one another, playing as if there were no differences between them. It touched Aurora deeply. The people down here seemed much more accepting of differences, of everyone's individual needs in life. Anyone was welcome and safe here. Society was made for all of them, no matter where they came from. Serenity and Samuel laid down in the kelp in the park, showing Aurora how to grip it so that she could peacefully float on her back and look at the surface above them. The moving waves cast a mosaic down on them, ever-changing, a dance of shadow and light through the sea overhead. The ocean seemed as though it was alive, not just with people, but as a being itself. It shimmered and sparkled with the energy of the sun, warming Aurora even this far below the waves. For the rest of the day, Serenity and Samuel took Aurora to every shop and experience she could dream of. She watched sea turtles fly by on their way to other cities. She watched dolphins dip and dive through the city with ease, only leaving once someone tossed a biscuit of some kind their way. The people of Pearl Crest lived in harmony with the world around them, something that Aurora admired greatly. They ate ice cream, which, in Pearl Crest, was a block of flavored ice. Aurora was surprised by how much it tasted like chocolate ice cream as she lapped at the popsicle and gazed up at the sun through the waves. By now, the day was nearly reaching its end. Street lights flickered on, bathing the whole city in an otherworldly, ethereal glow. Bioluminescent algae floated around in the light sockets, providing Pearl Crest with all the light it needed in the darkness of the night. As the sun set, Aurora was in awe of another marvel of the underwater world, the sunset. She felt as though she was looking up at a watercolor painting. The pinks and purples and yellows of the setting sun melded and danced together, creating a moving art piece unlike any other. The 
last fairy was at nine, just as the sun was due to set all the way over the horizon. As they started making their way back to the ferry station, Serenity and Samuel pulled Aurora back, urging her to stay. Surely she could stay for another day, another week. Aurora smiled at her cousins. She thought back to how long she had longed for this experience, how much of her childhood was spent dreaming of this magical place. With a smile on her face, she chimed to Serenity and Samuel, I would love to stay. I hope you have enjoyed this sleep story, and it has brought you a night of peaceful, restful sleep. Please, Join me again tomorrow night for another sleep story. Until then, sweet dreams. <laughs>